Let's note well, shall we? This is not an IETF working group, but we are operating under the policies of the note well nonetheless, which means that we are operating under code of conduct and anti-harassment policies, as well as all of the assorted interesting IPR policies. Let's please extend respect and courtesy to your colleagues, try and keep the conversations impersonal. We're trying to get work done here. Failing, but trying to get work done here. All right. Um, so uh, you'll note in the chat room, please join us in the notepad so that you can add your notes and help out uh, with uh, Stephen who uh, generously volunteered, <laughs> begrudgingly was volunteered to be the official note taker, but uh, he does have to jump out toward the end. So please uh, help out there. And well, I'll let Russ introduce the agenda. <laughs> So Pete and I have been struggling to figure out how to make progress. And we agree that we don't understand the line, at least between the two of us, between what an RSWG policy that goes into a, a document in, produced by this group versus something that is an RPC practice and it is at their discretion what they do or don't do. Um, so we're having this hard time. We might be wrong, but we think that a discussion on that will clear some of the log jam on what things we can come to consensus about. So we would like to focus today's hour on determining whether we have consensus on which thing belong in this group as discussions of policy and which thing we are never going to make a policy about because that's an RPC internal uh, matter. So we think these three questions will guide us there, not um, um, that these are you know magic questions in any way. These are ones that Pete and I brainstormed about and we think that they will um, help us understand where that line is or whether we have consensus on that line. Lars. Hi, uh, Lars Egger. Let me make this harder for you. Oh, and wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> in, in the sense that there's also um, policy things that are stream specific. Yes. And they are RPC practice things that are stream specific. And they might do the same things for all the streams, which might right. make them look like RSWG policy or RPC. So, so it's a little bit more dicey than that, unfortunately. We, we were trying to come up with the, the line that will right. help us know what to focus so, on. <laughs> I, 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 so I don't want to do, derail this. So I think the questions you pose are still a good starting point. And I think an answer there might um, naturally flow into answers for the other more complicated things. Thing. We hope so, <laughs> but you're correct. Um, Robert. Robert Sparks. So functionally, we've been having to answer these questions as we've been moving along while our RSWG was, was getting underway. And we've been able to use without a great deal of pain um, in discussions between the um, RPC uh, team that was reformed under the RPC called the RPC Advisory Team, RPAT, and the RSAB, um, when, when the questions came up, things tended to fall out fairly naturally and there wasn't a great deal of controversy about it. So I'm not really expecting that you're going to discover that there's a lot of tension in this room. I about would love that to be the case. These things. <laughs> we, we were kind of hoping that these were all straw men kind of questions that 
we would suddenly collapse on obvious consensus about where these lines are. But the discussion as it's been going on when we've gotten into the particulars of what people think on particular topics seem to be whipping back and forth across these lines. And, so I hope you're right. And, and I think that they necessarily will continue to do so and that these are places where um, it's going to be judgment at the time. And I don't, I, I caution you to avoid hoping that there is an output of this exercise that is a statement that tells everybody where that line is, because this is very definitely going to turn out being the you know it when you see it kind of um, judgment calls. You might be right, but if we can at least have a similar mental model from this discussion, because <laughs> it was pretty clear to Pete and I that we were not there on the interim. Go ahead, uh, okay. Elliot. Hi. Uh, in order, um, is uh, the, the XML uh, schema for the author address changes, is the RPC required to post new XML for a published RPC, for a published RFC? Required is too strong. May, um, may be appropriate. Right. Um, may, maybe. <laughs> may, yeah. So, um, it's, it, it, as, as Robert said, this falls out from, uh, as a sense of pragmatics. I've seen the postal code break myself firsthand on new stuff. Um, I don't, as a, neither as an individual nor as a stream member, I don't object to it in principle so long as appropriate safeguards are, uh, take place such that that's the only stuff that's touched. In the in the old documents, that doesn't you know that's I think the pragmatic view, right? If uh, if we if we cause things that are you know, to be to be redone to the rest of the document as as a result, uh, that gets a little grayer. So uh, it goes back to what Robert says: some judgment needs to be put into place, and so these things have to be handled on a case by case basis. Which brings me to number two: um, an error in the XML for uh, RFC nine eight seven six is discovered. Is the RPC required to edit the, uh, the XML file? I think this was answered, at least by me, I don't know, and, and I think the, there, there were other people who agreed with me on this point, uh, as to uh, what that means. Uh, if it's an erratum, the answer is clearly no. Um, if it is an error in the production process, or was, if, it's, if it was an error in the production process of RFC 90, 9876, particularly after everybody agreed this is what we expect the output to be, then the answer is clearly yes. Um, yeah, well, I would say yes. I, I required is almost too strong, but a, a good should seems like, a, like a, uh, an appropriate thing. And then a new XML tool version is released, and the tool, uh, and the tool produces the different layout for table one in RFC 9876. I thought there was consensus that the RPC may post uh, new publication formats for RFC 9876. But again, that is a, um, it, 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 it is not only a judgment call, but there's a, there's a lot of issues uh, that will have to be sorted between the RPC, and the LLC, in terms of the resources required to even accomplish that, if they're even structured to do it. So it's possible to, to accomplish, and anything's pos possible to accomplish in this space with whatever amount of money we want to devote to it, but we should also be recognizing that some things are harder than others, mm -hmm. and some things are worth it, and some things are not. Can, Elliot, before you step away, so what I think I heard you say was questions of the sort in one are not policy for this group. They are more about practice. Same with three, but something like two is going to require a policy of this group. Is that approximately I don't think we correct? need to go to policy in this group for it, even because I think the RPC already does it. You know, if they, if they discovered it, if they discover a, you know, a problem that, that was clearly outside the intent of the publication process, I think it's okay to, to, to make whatever changes is necessary, particularly for stuff that's recently released. If it's stuff that's been out there for ages, I mean, I'm mostly okay with that as long as 
it's clear what the intent was. Now, sometimes the intent isn't known, and that's where things get hairy. So even that number two needs a judgment call. Thank you. That, that was uh, insightful, I am, and I'm sure we're about to hear disagreements, because I'm sure that Julian voiced a very different view on the inner. Yeah. yeah. Jay, Hi. go ahead. Thank you, Jay Daly. Um, before I um, get into this, I'd like to hear from you two as to the use of the word required there. Yeah. It's a very specific word, and yeah. I wonder if you just elaborate a little bit more on your choice of that word. Um, we had a, di a different formulation that didn't use the word, and we thought putting this word in front of the group now would spark the kinds of comments that Elliot was making, and that we might, at the end of this, change the questions in a way that lends it uh, that we would put the more appropriate word that represented consensus, okay. right? That's what we're really hoping yeah, to achieve. I, I, I don't object to the use of the word. I think um, it does get to the heart of the disagreements that, that is between, say, me Because and we want to know where yeah. people are at. No, absolutely. Yes. So I, I, I've, I've sent a, uh, an email answer that's a very brief summary of what I think about it. And so um, uh, let me just get into this a little bit more, if you don't mind. Um, so in number one, there are three cases here. Um, case number one is where we deliberately, intentionally want to retrospectively change it, which is what um, the change we're talking about, that John is talking about. So yes, they're required. Right, with the author address yeah. format line. Your change yeah. number two is where we change it, but we still allow the old grammar. Yep. Okay. And in that case, no, we don't need to change it. All right. And stage number three is where we, do, we don't allow the old grammar, and in that case, my preference is no, we should not require them to change it, but we should be clear in the numbering of the grammar that we have issued a new grammar that breaks the old grammar, okay? Um, which is something that has to happen at some time. So um, that's the answer to number one. So number two, by an error in the XML, I took that specifically to mean that the XML does not validate, right? Um, uh -huh. There might be some other case where it validates but is nonsensical that might also come into that. Right, you know, that's like, the one um, I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, I, you I, can repeat that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Robert said, what about content errors that aren't? that are editorial, very specific editor, such as they got the date of the document wrong mm. as well, possibly. So um, my view is that there is a set of things where yes, they are required to edit the XML. Um, a non-validating XML, for example, absolutely is one of them. Um, are they required to post new publication formats? Now, that depends on whether or not we're still going to embed the XML in the PDF. If we assume we're not, because it seems as though you know there is consensus on that, and apologies if that uh, that that's your job to call, not mine. But um, the so I do not think they should be required to unless we know there is a content change. This is the essence of the di disagreement yeah, between Julian. Exactly where he right. believes we should be required to yeah. because he's a computer person, not a publishing person. Hi, Julian. Um, so number three, um, again, no, not required. Right, a new table format. But this is the one which is the required, really doesn't make much sense to me about this one. This is really where it's all about the may and the rules about the may and the why, and that's where the complexity is in that one there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Paul. Paul Hoffman. So um, my views are simpler than Jay's. Okay. Um, I think that it, they are never required and that we have, that the RSWG has a policy that says the RPC can choose on any of these. And it lists some of them as examples. So I do think we have to have a policy, but the policy is we trust the RPC. It's worked for us for the last zillion years. Um, I don't see anything that would, you know, change that. And um, 
that lets us in the future if we say oh that didn't work then we can look for Response. specific examples but for all of these the rpc should not be required um, they are allowed to my guess is they will say we didn't my guess is they would would do all of these but they might say you know we didn't do this one this time for this reason and if people go, oh, no, you really should have, then they might still do it. There's a conversation that can go on over time, just as there's been a conversation since day one. As this goes along, if someone, tools or RPC related, would think about getting to the mic and saying whether you are okay with ideas like, yeah, let's just leave this to the RPC, that would be helpful input. I can give an example. Um, the one that Robert brought up of the wrong date, that was on an R RFC that I wrote. <laughs> they had to change the date. Fine. John. Um, well, the good news is that I think the answers to all these are obvious, but the bad news is that I think the answers to all these are obvious. <laughs> and in particular, number one is an RSWG question, two and three are not. And, the re and for number one, I think it is a definitely a policy question whether we plan to keep all of our RFCs using the same XML grammar or, or not. And if not, you know, at what rate do we plan to make incompatible changes? I mean, I think at, at this point, I think we have enough experience that it's worth making one round of incompatible changes and then going back and retrofitting stuff so we can say now this is what we're, we're going to call it 3.1 or whatever is the grammar that we have been using because we just fixed it and we will use for some significant period of time until we until we come up with enough changes to make a big jump to version four. Okay, so I, you know, so I, I think- so, so wait a minute, I wanna explore a path that you opened or a scab you picked at, whatever yeah. you want to think of it. And, and that is the, right now, we have the V2 and the V3 schemas. Right. But you can't, you have to, really dig in to figure out which one you're looking at at a given moment. No, that's a no, no, you know, you know, it, it, it's, it's, an, it, you, you can tell from the, if from you the start RFC doing element. point one and point two and point three with him, we need a way to tag that very clearly. It's tagged now. Yeah, it's in the XML. Uh, we looked and couldn't find it. <laughs> Ask us later. We'll, okay. We'll give you some hints. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a, no, it's, all right, thank okay. you. I'll, I'll dig into that. Yeah, further. so anyway, you know, and and I think the reason to fix the fix the postal and fix the name of the document, which is being my right. my thing is, yeah, I, I feel strongly about postal. I believe Robert feels strongly about the document name, and there's a few other little myths like that. They all can be changed mechanically. I mean, so I believe that the, the, the chances of changing the semantics of the document when we fix them are quite low, and, we, and I only want to do this once. You know, and then, and then going forward, we're going to say, okay, we're not going to make any incompatible changes until sometime when we've all retired and it's somebody else's job to come up with version four. Right. Okay. For number two, um, I don't think it's an interesting question because XML to RFC uses a standard library that validates the XML. And it would be a, an extraordinarily unlikely production failure for, 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 for an invalid XML to go through to go through the production process. So this basically comes back to like errata and whatever the rules for errata are, they are what they are worth it. Yeah, like changing the date, that's an errata. Okay, for number three, we already have quite a lot of practice for this because XML to our, the, the, the tool has been evolving for a couple of years and every time it evolves, the output formats change. And particularly for the PDFs, the output formats change a lot. And if we re-rendered those early PDFs today, they would end up a, a lot shorter because the page breaks used to be extremely terrible and they are now only sort of terrible. Um, and so and I think the answer, and, and so far we've said it's like, yeah, whatever, they're, they're good enough. I mean, there might be a point at which we say, you know, we, we've improved the rendering so much that it's worth re-rendering. But I think that's entirely up, that's entirely up, up to the RPC. And we have, ex and uh, the, the existing practice, which is the rent, the only times we have, contradicting myself slightly. There was one case where a bug in XML to RFC cut off the bottoms of some tables in the PDFs. Right. Okay, they re-rendered they re those because those were actively wrong. Right. Okay, short of, you know, 
when that you know and basically that was a bug and we fixed it being short of short of actively wrong i think number yeah basically number one is policy number two is errata so that doesn't it's not really an xml question and number three is we've already answered that question it is, you don't have to okay thank you uh robert All right, Robert Sparks. Um, Jay poked briefly at why you chose the word required. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope I'm not going to um, not play nice with the intent of the, the straw man that you put up here. Um, it's clear, I think, to me that the, what this is really picking at is who decides and when. Right. That's where where is the authority for making this decision? Is it something that's made ahead of time by this group, or is it made when encountered by um, a, an operational group? And I think, as has already been expressed, but I will re um, reframe it. We need policy when if we don't have policy, the series is damaged, the users of the series can't, are, are going to suffer, right? The, the when, when there is a need to capture a, uh, particularly when there's an, a, a, a difficult set of decisions that need to be made around principle that we have that these principles captured to guide the operational decisions that are made as, ju as judgment calls. Mm -hmm. So the number of things where we're going to have required should be small, should be placed in when we discover that we need them, um, that we want to give the operational aspect of this as much leeway as we can so that it can quickly do the right thing for the consumers of the series, right? And then as a second nature, do the right thing for the producers of the series um, so that we don't fail to make the internet a better place because we're burning years on internal discussions. That was me very quietly venting a massive amount of pent up frustration. Yeah, I, I heard it. <clears throat> so are, are you inclined to take a match to our straw men and say, none of these would fall into the kinds of things that policy would need to be said about even up leveled one? I think yes, but Jay is right that there is a little hint in here, the expectation that policy says that what we are going to produce is actually from a technical framework correct, that we're not putting out something there that is fundamentally broken like the XML is broken, what doesn't validate kind of thing. I think it's reasonable that it's just part of the spirit of what we're capturing for the, the framework that, you know, we are producing things that work, right? Um, and that that would even go as far as the you know the the operational side is expected to pay attention to you know the unlikely case that the browsers all decide that our HTML is bad and they're not going to show it, and that we have to change our HTML so that it gets shown again. I think that that is actually a thing that is policy that's not a line item policy, but should there should be something in whatever we create as policy that guides. The operational decisions that say that that we will do the right thing when something like that is is presented. Yeah. No, thank you. That was very insightful. Um, and you did specifically ask for someone from the tooling to stand up and say, yeah. So you know. He did. <laughs> Colin. Hi, uh, Colin Perkins. Um, I I am confused. Um, I, I am confused. Um, so I, are we. I, I don't understand why we're discussing this, because the answer to all of these is clearly it depends. 
um, if you know, there are ways we could change the schema for an offer address, which would be incompatible and might require everything to be updated. There are ways we could change the schema for an offer address, which are trivial and don't affect anything which has been published or previously. We could add an optional field. Okay, we don't need to then do anything. An error in the XML. It could be something fundamental that requires it to be re reissued. Maybe it doesn't validate. Um, it could be something trivial. Maybe they forgot to include some optional field that it might be nice to have, but it's considered an error. Maybe they miss, it did something that's trivial. Um, a new version of the tool is released. Maybe maybe the different layout is you know a trivial change. Maybe it's something fundamental. In all of these cases, the answer has to be, it depends. We have a bunch of professionals running the RPC. Let them do their job. Heard that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Thank you. Stephen. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm more or less in agreement with Robert and well, I, I, I kind of hear a lot of people agreeing. I don't think these are kind of policy things. I do think uh, we could give some policy guidance to say like, you really should have a good reason for reissuing a whole pile of old, old RFCs. Um, you know, we don't need to define what's good, a good reason too much, I don't think, but just say, you know, we think it's better that for the consumers of, of the series that you don't kind of make gratuitous changes or be very careful about making any large changes. I think that's enough policy. So um, you would say the policy is that we want to make as few changes as possible um, for to preserve stability for the readers. But when it is deemed necessary by the RPC, they should do so. Sure. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, on, on the assumption that the, you know, if, if something as mad is going to happen, they would kind of talk to us first, which I guess will happen. So. Okay. I, I think that's a, um, an interesting uh, way to slice this. Gene. Gene Mahoney, RFC Production Center. Um, so I wanted to address more the, our, our operational um, point of view. We're here to serve the community. Um, if the community thinks that we should re-render, um, we can do that. Um, I, I wanted to let people know that if, if when, say, um, we post new XML for all the published RFCs, there will be quite a bit of um, infrastructure we would need to put in place to do this. Uh, so that's just an ops consideration. Um, and I am happy to hear people are, are trusting us to, to make some of these decisions here. And I would like to say we would not go boldly into this. <laughs> we're, we're not here going, woo, we're, we're going to have so much fun doing this. Um, we're just, we're not there operationally. Um, I, I just wanted to, to let people know that, you know, we're, we're not going to run amok and, um, and, and have fun with this. Um, the, um, and uh, as has been pointed out, we have re-rendered that one RFC that had the issue in um, the PDF output. Um, we have very rarely made mistakes like getting a date wrong um, when we have published an RFC or there was just something and we actually republished with a new RFC number um, way back in the day. So for content changes, um, uh, we've done that. So um, anyway, and, and but for like the little things like um, layout changes, we've got better page breaks. Uh, I think we as the RPC 
uh, would prefer that it would be very beneficial to the reader uh, before we would re-render. Um, the, and I guess another thing to, to point out is like the very first time we do this, that will, we'll learn a lot of things. It'll take a lot of time. Um, it will not be easy. It will get easier. So I think that perhaps uh, we could experiment, say, with, um, and, and again, not publish yet, but go ahead and see what would happen with changing the postal lines or changing two postal lines. I mean, what effort are we really looking at here? Um, and I think that would be good information for people. But So I guess in summary, thank you for um, trusting the RPC to make some of these decisions um, and you know, would not just take that trust and go galloping off <laughs> and making lots of changes. So thank and, you. And actually, one of the reasons I asked was the converse question, which I think I heard mm -hmm. the answer to, which is you don't feel like you need some sort of backing by way of policy of this group in order to oh, feel empowered to do actually, that Actually, no, would I, so we have these conversations here and decisions might get made and we could do this and lots of people who have not been paying attention will go, what the hell just happened? What, what, what? Um, and even if it's trivial changes and it's like, this is just a reprint, you know, we, the documents look different. I, let I let me rephrase. <laughs> Uh, that you being able to say RSWG said we could use our best judgment here and that's what we did and we will make adjustments if the community has yelled and doesn't think that's a good idea but you don't need us to write down a policy for each and every one of these things so that you can point and say they said to do it that's why we did it you, that was sort of what I was trying to get a feel for. Um, right. Um, <laughs> you do want us to. Oh, Jay raised his hand. We will handle the complaints. <laughs> um, but that makes us nervous. Uh, the RPC gets very nervous. We actually just smaller, just smaller discussions. Um, yep. it, there's a lot of. Um, yeah, uh, with this new model and we're working it out where, and, and Robert mentioned um, the RPAT, uh, the advisory team and also RSAB, um, but we feel like we need to do that. Um, otherwise people go, what are they doing? And, and I actually, I personally feel that there are community members that just don't trust us. I don't know what they think we're going to be doing, but that there's, um, uh, it's odd that, that they. Okay. Thank you, Jean. Yeah, okay. so you're sixth in line, Maria. Yeah, but I wanted to do an up. Jay interrupted. That's <laughs> okay for one thing. I'm just like, uh, sorry, I also came in late, so I'm going to miss some of the conversation. But I just want to say this group is supposed to write RFCs, right? This is the only thing they can do. If they want to do any policy, they have to write it down in RFC and they publish it and then the policy is valid. So there's nothing they can do on a short term. If you have short term problems, you don't want to tackle yourself, then we can try to help you. If we have short term problems where we don't know to tackle them at all, we have to rethink the model. Understand. Mm -hmm. No, they can't. The only thing this group can do is write an RFC. So the, this group can say we're not writing an RFC because we don't think that policy is needed, but that means implicitly the RPC can decide whatever they want. Karsten? Yeah, I think we are holding this wrong. Um, I think we need to stop using the word policy. 
um, because people seem to understand policy as micromanagement, and that's not what, what is meant by policy. And uh, yeah, but look at the slide. <laughs> and so I think what we, we really should be documenting is our objectives. So if there is a consensus about the objectives, I see wide or stream wide, uh, that should be documented. And this is what, what RFCs could be uh, good for. And uh, somebody will have to interpret this uh, objective. And of course, uh, decisions will have to be made and so on. And a secondary function of this group can still be to provide support. Uh, I mean, you provide support by talking not by making RFCs, uh, but I think the, the primary function really should be to, to uh, collect consensus about objectives. Um, I have a, a, another point I just need to make because the, the discussion always runs into these weird dead ends. Um, the RFC format is not defined by a grammar. So what we do, do uh, due to the grammar may be the most obvious uh, thing uh, about uh, doing something to the RFC format, but there are lots of other things in there. So for instance, uh, what kinds of text strings are allowed within that grammar, or what the semantics of the various parts are, and so on. And the V3 grammar we have right now is essentially based on an RFC that included the existing V2 grammar pretty much. So everything that's valid in, in V2 and was included is part of our grammar. But we somehow have decided to maybe not use some of these things anymore, maybe. And th that's not even documented very much uh, at, at this point in time. There, there are some explicit deprecations, but what we are actually doing is not necessarily exactly on the line of those deprecations. So um, when we do this, this uh, postal address uh, thing, uh, we are not going to do anything new here. We have done a dozen of those, um, except that nobody has been looking. And um, so uh, maybe with looking, it will work a little bit better than the previous ones um, uh, did. Um, but uh, uh, we, we should be, we should not be idolizing uh, that grammar. We should look at the whole thing. And the other changes actually uh, currently make it uh, rather adventurous to regenerate the current set of, of RFCs. Um, so we, we will have to find out uh, a way to deal with these uh, past format changes that we have behind us, which mostly are uh, semantic changes and, and not grammar um, uh, changes. Uh, so we, we shouldn't uh, deal with this as if we didn't have a problem. We do have a problem there. Um, on the other hand, um, there are several uh, requirements that are currently not being met, one of which is accessibility, which was mentioned on the list. Uh, and uh, we may want to do something in this space um, because our objective to, to have accessible content uh, may have been uh, receiving less attention in the past than we wanted to be in the future. So because mm -hmm. we have this objective of stability, uh, we have this objective of accessibility, and <laughs> there's a direct conflict between them. And uh, we should be, be we should be trying to make our objectives here clear. So of, of course, accessibility accessibility work should not keep authors <laughs> from publishing RFCs because it's getting in the way. Um, we should not create errors and so on. But for instance, adding something to a figure that allows you to look at the source code of that. Uh, figure is, is not something that, that is, is fundamentally changing the, the uh, meaning of the RFCs, but it really will require re-rendering uh, all that HTML. Thank you. Alexis? Uh, I think most of what I have to say has probably already been said, but in the, in the interest of having consensus uh, be apparent. Um, I agree pretty much entirely with what Paul said as far as we need to trust the RPC to do their jobs. They're professionals. They have 
an extremely good track record as far as I've seen of not making any willy-nilly changes. Every single thing I have seen has been well discussed with every potential party. Um, so the idea that we need to put a leash on uh, what they can do and how they can do it uh, seems overzealous. Um, I definitely don't agree with the word required here on any of these. I think that we uh, are running into the tendency to prescribe solutions instead of uh, figuring out what our goals are and just stating the goals and allowing them to do their jobs. So, um, and then I also wanted to echo what Jean said, which I think is, if we are allowing the RPC to use their discretion, we, I think, do need to be explicit in an RFC that they are allowed to do so because Gene is correct. There, there certainly are people in the community who don't seem to think that they can do their jobs, uh, which is absurd and insulting. So <laughs> I do think that we need to give them at least enough backup that they can be able to do a good job with the things that we decide to do here. The only thing up here that I think even remotely touches on policy is number one. Lars. Yeah, Lars, on the, on the second point, I wanna agree with Alexis, right? And, and I'm happy to see that we are apparently leaning towards letting the RPC use their judgment. Um, we need to back them up, not only by with an, with an RFC, but also if, you know, the inevitable, why did they do this email thread starts? All, all of us need to say, because we told them to, and even if we individually might disagree that they did the right thing, we still need to say, because we told them to. Because if we, for every little thing that they decide, then uh, we open the whole can of worms, right? That is not uh, really helpful. And and the, as a stream owner, right? I um, the the RPC is incredibly hesitant to do something on their own because they have been burned in the past. And if you want them to get out of that mode, right, where they're comfortable making small, reasonable decisions on their own. Right? We, we got to get out of the mode of second guessing every little thing that they do. And, and that's going to be sort of a collective um, uh, thing I think we all need to uh, do. Um, random other things. So I like Carson's uh, phrasing of maybe ob thinking about the objectives for the series um, first. So, so um, these are, for me, all, all way too detailed. And we, we all like details. And we all like then immediately go even deeper when we actually need to zoom out a whole lot more. But talking about the objectives of the series and then thinking about what policy might support maintaining or reaching those objectives, right? That would be, I think, a worthwhile endeavor. And then we can figure out like what documents do need to exist to sort of right. do something here. But even to me, like the, the discussions about the details of the XML, I'm really sometimes questioning whether this is something that this group should do. I know a lot of people care deeply about this, but to me, that is not really maybe within even the top five of most important things that we should be doing. Right. Okay, if um, XML is not discussed here, where is it? I don't know. Okay. Right. <laughs> but, or maybe we need to have a, like an XML design team in this group or something like that. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll, st I'll stop uh, brain brainstorming live at the microphone. Um, but so, so maybe, or maybe XML is a special case that is, you know, uh, where this is the best home for it, but I, I it, it can't be the only thing we do. And I, I think sure. it's, it's also not, maybe I agree not the most with important. that. Right. So, um, and that's that there is like what Mira said, right? There's this whole thing with the RSAP and, and, and the RSWG. And we need to figure out like, what does it mean to interpret policy versus setting the policy? Exactly. You need to understand there's things that are like errata processing was brought up um, in my mind. That is something that is stream specific. Because the IRTF stream, for example, might do something very different than the IETF stream. Mm -hmm. we, you don't, but you could, could. could. And for reasonable <laughs> reasons, right? And therefore, I would want to leave that flexibility, right? Um, but for example, you know, the objectives for how errata should be processed should be could be something that this group might say something general about, right? It, you know, maybe having them sit around for ten years is not ideal, or. <laughs> Some, something to that effect. <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I would really sort of want to zoom out uh, a whole lot more. Um, and also, if, if we do do the reasonable thing, which is empower the RPC to take decisions on their own, we got to support this, even if we don't like it. Okay, thank you. John Clausen. Uh, 
I, I, I want to reinforce something I said in, in email and uh, but draw it together with several of the other comments which have been made. Uh, it seems to me that most of us are saying almost the same thing in very different ways. Um, we need to trust the RPC because we have no choice. We also need to trust the RPC because in spite of Gene's misgivings, there are members of the community who trust the RPC much more than they trust this group, especially for <laughs> understanding of the community and representativeness and, uh, and understanding of goals. Um, and as I said in the, in the email, and I think this goes together with several of the comments which have been made about, uh, about stability, about not tampering with things, uh, I think one of the things we should say on a policy basis is that one of our primary goals for the RPC is getting things which have been agreed on by the streams should be published, um, uh, put together and published in the minimum amount of time possible, consistent with high quality, with the high quality the RPC has been delivering for years, if not better. And, uh, and that's a trade off against diddling with old documents, no matter how it is we diddle around which dimensions. Um, so I think that's a, a clear policy issue. And it is probably beneficial that we repeat it and repeat it in conjunction with other things which have the same implications. Um, and I think I'll stop there. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, um, hi, Jay Daly again. Um, so uh, I very much understand and agree with Jean that a, um, an RFC that explicitly gives the RPC this is important. And actually, I think we have to have one because there is a principle of mutability built into a number of other documents, um, not ex completely explicitly, but close enough that we have to we have to undo it in order to enable this to happen. Um, and I agree with Stephen that guidance that basically says don't do it too often, you know, for some of these things is important because there is the overall reputation and trust of the stream to do that, you know, and that that has to be considered as part of it. Um, luckily, I know someone has written a draft that says exactly all those things. But anyway, so I think we, you know, we I think we all understand why we have to get to that position. Thank you. Elliot, you're going to jump line. <laughs> okay. So Robert Sparks, um, internalizing some of the things that I heard and thinking in particular about laying down a, the RPC did this because we said so kind of artifact. And responding to Lars' frustration with micro-focusing on the big elephant that we've been blocked on when we've got other aspects that we need to look at. I want to point out that there are a reasonable number of community members that have a different vision for what the output of the IETF should look like um, that don't think, and I'm putting words in their mouths here, I'm, that um, don't think that the RFC series should even exist, that we should be publishing them in pretty live documents, discussion, the things like this. Um, a lot of the same people that might be, um, cause the RPC to feel like they don't trust them, aren't really going after the RPC. PC. They're going after the institution that is the RSC series and that they want to change, that they want to be different. And the RPC is one of the walls that they bump up against when they're trying to make this change. They're not in a room that says something, um, but we need to uh, uh, account and encourage conversation with, with with the people that have these ideas so that we're not continually just having schism. 
Thank you. Yeah, that was a little bit of a mouthful, Robert. Um, okay. Where are we? I think in this room, I'll, I'll, as an individual, what I heard was there was pretty good consensus on faith in the RPC's use of judgment. It, I will say for me, and we obviously have to talk about this afterwards, this conversation has made me much more comfortable with the direction to go. Yes, okay. very much. Which, you know, the people didn't show up. Uh, there's a, they, they can be in the rough, or you know, if there, if there are a lot of them, then we'll, then we'll circle back. Which brings me to my next point. Um, I warned Russ I would say this. I warned Pete I would say this at a different point. In the immortal words of Monty Python, get on with it. Okay, we have lots of stuff that are blocking. If we have to, you know, I, I want ways forward such that we don't block. If, if, we're, if we're hitting issues that we do block, we can work them in parallel, but we're, I'm done listening to, to, to this spinning around. I want to make sure that we get disability dealt with, disability issues or accessibility issues dealt with, math ML dealt with, postal, if not, I think postal has to be dealt with because it's breaking. Um, and I'd like to see SVG dealt with. If this stuff can't block that stuff at this point, it's time. Well, and, and we, Paul and uh, Russ and I spoke before the session. And part of the problem we were having was we felt like the group kept getting wrapped around the axle of things that probably should have just been RPC practice that were entering into policy discussions that were for us blocking how to move forward on those issues. Okay. So getting consensus on the direction we're taking here actually unblocks your chairs from pushing forward on some stuff. Okie doke. Then hopefully what, um, what I'll be expecting then as a member of the RSAB will be some documents that will start progressing in terms of those issues as and when they're needed. Now, um, I know it's a little too early to talk about the, the accessibility document that just came out. There's some analysis that are, that, that's needed, but I think um, in terms of the, you know, what has to happen with math, um, I think that's pretty clear, uh, or at least I think we can get to clear pretty quickly. Um, for SVG, uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident we can get to pretty clear uh, uh, quickly there too. And for Postal, I actually, you know, I've backed off my own position a little bit so that things can get done. I actually think we can get pretty clear there. So I'm really, really looking forward uh, to us uh, seeing stuff in the RSAP. Thank you. Miria? Um, I just wanted to comment on this point, what's policy again? So I think in general, we should actually trust the RPC with because they're the experts and like their role is to um, have something that is uh, um, stable and and uh, com no, compatible is the wrong word. Have like the same <laughs> feel, and feel and touch to it all the time. So that's part of their role and that's what they're doing. And I feel like, you know, if we don't have a problem, we shouldn't put a policy on it. It's like, it's the cases where we have a problem. And it's, and I see two cases. One is the RPC is actually unsure about what they want to do and they want guidance. But in that case, we still need somebody from the RPC or the community to actually write down some guidance so we can actually discuss some guidance or policy, right? It doesn't help to just bring the problem. You need to propose a solution to this group. That's important. Or somebody is unhappy with what the RPC is doing and then they can also write it down in a policy and then we can have a discussion about changing it in the future. But also it, it must be recognized that whatever we do here is not changing anything we do tomorrow. It's changing anything when we have published the RFC and when we have consensus. So it can always just be on a level where we have like a longer hierarchy. I'm fine with all that as long as we don't block. Paul? 
very briefly, um, going to what Robert had said about the people who don't like the RFC series or whatever, that's not for this work. <laughs> I'm hearing some questions. I look at the charter and I don't see anything in this work group about should we not do RFCs, should we do them radically differently. I don't see that at all. I see that this is about the publication of RFCs. Looks like a man, I might glad I got in line at this point. Um, so so I, I disagree with Paul. So, so my definition of RFC is output of the ITF. Right, because this is really the only thing that the IETF outputs, and other people also output, but there's other streams. And, and Robert mentioned, the, I mean, there's people that are unhappy with the format of the RFCs, and they want to change the RFCs. But there's the living documents discussion is broader, right? We have, for example, Dan Yang models that are outputs of the IETF that we're trying to like maintain as an organization as well. And we have this bespoke defined way with the Yang catalog, and. IANA's mirroring them and so on. And now there's the, in Yang land, there's SID files. We had the discussion earlier, right, where people have valid reasons to have other things coming out of the IETF that they want to maintain. Um, and they're not RFCs and sticking them into an R, I mean, sticking the Yang into an RFC was already a clue, right? We did it for SNB. No, not SNMP. It didn't work then, it doesn't work for Yang. And so for, for this new type of document or this new type of information, they decided to find some other way to, to put it somewhere other than the internet draft and in the RFC, which is fully understandable, right? Um, but at those discussions need to be had somewhere. And, and there's, I think this is actually the group to have them. Like what, what, what do we do if, if working groups want to publish things that aren't just like static text documents, but they are maybe structured in some way or, and, and how do we do that, right? And, and the IRTF again, right? might well also decide at some point that their, their output is something other than just RFCs on the stream. Um, so th I think these broader discussions need to be had somewhere. Codec four, definitions, four oh yeah. Folks. Uh, yeah, I agree with Lars, uh, disagree with Paul. Um, and also for another reason is that they're gonna complain anyway. So you gotta talk to them somewhere and you know, the hallway is maybe not quite good enough for this, if you want to get an out outcome. Thank you. Plus one to all that that Stephen and Lars just said. OK, we're almost out of time. I'm way more comfortable now than when we walked in this room uh, that we have uh, a good line about what is policy and what is practice and we will have to write that down and Pete and I will uh, collaborate on that hopefully more quickly than the last set of minutes um, so I very much appreciate it and I hope that this uh, results in unblocking a whole bunch of things that was the intent and I hope it uh, has that result uh, Quick meta Lars issue. is running to the mic. Yeah, a quick meta issue on the before you're closing um, on the scheduling of this. Right? Yes. Because we went back and forth, and this is now like in a slightly unusual spot, given that it's lunch and there's no lunch. And right. I would sort of, I think it would be helpful to understand if this is something that the group wants to do, or whether we rather want to conflict with a bunch of working groups, which is going to be very make it difficult. But um, we, we did this as an experiment, I'm guessing now, and I guess. Okay, so say, let's do a real hum. <laughs> uh, how many people? Uh, believe that uh, finding a time that conflicts with nothing else is important. And how many people think it's okay to be in a regular working group slot? I think it's pretty clear that we just go into the normal mix. Colin. Hi, Colin Perkins. I mean, if you want the stream managers to be here, you have to avoid conflicting with things which they have to go to. We, we know that. So you can't just be in a regular slot. It means that we have, <laughs> if we can't be in a regular slot, it means we're going to end up in things like this, giving out lunches uh, or, or, breakfast. or breakfast or something. Or, or doing only interims. That's the, which I. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we are uh, Miriam? down to one minute. Um, 
people will hate me now, <laughs> but um, breakfast is slightly better because people can breakfast be get breakfast before breakfast, right? Um, but also from leadership point of view, but it also it doesn't have to be Lars and me who will be in R7 future, so there might be a, an opportunity in future to do it differently. But like we, the only slot that is open is Friday breakfast, right? Okay, we'll talk. All right, people are beginning to show up for the next session, so thank you very much. <laughs> Very happy. I am. No one needs to have a discussion of what next.